Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models, my name is Bobby Waldron and welcome to a whole brand new step by step. It's going to be an advanced step by step as well, it's only three episodes long and strangely enough for the first time ever I've actually finished this video, this whole build before even episode one has gone up. So here it is already, you get to see what we are going to be doing what we're going to be building as you can see it's a p51d mustang we're going to be concentrating with this one on just advanced stuff a few nice areas three episodes long so it's going to be sort of quick punchy getting straight to the point of some nice advanced stuff uh, just a quick one you know this kit that we are building it is the very long range tales of iwa jima it is by eddard it's 148 scale of a p51d mustang um, this is a limited edition kit they have got different um well they've reboxed this to hell as always um so you can use sort of pretty much any p51d mustang um, you do get a lot of markings with this kit as you can see absolutely tons and tons and tons of markings um really really nice kit and it has built together rather rather well um just a quick one i will say the decals bit of a nightmare not the best for um, Eddard, it's quite strange. I've built loads of these kits before um, and had no problems with Eddard with their decals, but for this particular sheet of decals um, was not the best. So with this advanced step-by-step, -step, I can tell you exactly what we're gonna go through over the next um, you know, next three episodes. We're gonna start off with the cockpit, right? And with the cockpit, a um, bit hard to see with it all in there, but with the cockpit, we're actually gonna sort of concentrate on sort of like some advanced stuff in the sense of we're gonna be doing spray work where we do like a Xenophel kind of thing. Um, we're also gonna be painting highlights as well so um, the whole idea is to sort of make it look brighter at the top and darker at the bottom also you can't really see it but down in there that we've got some woodwork right um, at the bottom on the floors it's a woodwork kind of thing going on underneath there and then I do believe it's painted over so not only are we going to be doing some nice woodwork but we're also going to be doing some nice chipping as well to show how that paint's been worn away and we start seeing the woodwork come through so that will be, I do believe that's going to be this episode, episode one, where you get to see all that. Um, the second episode, we're going to be going all out natural metal finishes, right? Um, natural metal finishes, there's lots of ways to go about natural metal finishes, but we're really going to sort of focus on, you know, what goes on underneath the natural metal finish you know we're going to be using we will be using the extreme metals right uh, we're going to be using literally one color right this has been done with one color but everything that we do underneath really reflects through with natural metal finishes so we're going to be sort of showing you how all these different things you can do kind of um, priming and pre-shading and that coming along with just one color will give us all these different sort of shades of this polished aluminium to sort of um, kind of basically do all the work before we actually put the main color on um, going into episode three we're going to be doing things like tinting right so um, you know things like um, we've got some panels here you can see it's just a slight shade of a blue you know how we tint that um, to get those different panels coming up um, a slightly different tint shall we say um, as well as some very sort of precise sharp um, final post shading but very light so we allow the natural metal finish to still come through nicely and not overpower it with post shading um, so without further ado let's get on with this advanced step by step and hopefully you'll enjoy it because um, it has been a joy to build and it's really nice to be able to show you the finished model and what to expect before we even get started so let's get started so moving along with the build, as you can see already, I mean, I've built up sort of like the cockpit area that's coming and along, and there is quite a lot of detail for something that is straight out of the box. We've got a, not, a lot of nice stuff going on inside there. Um, now, what I want to do is I want to sort of show you some sort of like wood effects. So for this, there's a really, really cool product. I really want to get it in the Genesis model store at some point, but we have this here. It's um, by RB Productions and it's this lovely photo etch, right? But it's a, a, a um, sort of like a bit of a mask 
for doing wood effects and look at that looks absolutely gorgeous so we want to use this on here so i'm just using we've got wood here which is 077 which is by vallejo model air we're going to do the usual um sort of i mean a 50-ish mix i mean i tend to maybe go maybe 30 40 percent thinners to paint Right, and what we want to do is get our base going. This is sort of nice and easy. As you can see, I'm just mixing in some of this wood effect, right? And we're just going to spray it down um, on the floor area of our cockpit just here, just to get that color down, just nice and flat, nice and easy. No, nothing really hard. And we'll move on to the more interesting bit. Right, with our wood color all nicely down there. Now what we want to do is we want to take our template dust here and we want to sort of pick, because uh, there is a bit of a different patterns going on here. So we want to sort of pick the one we want. I'm going to probably go for, you know, this bit just here. And what we want to do, get out some Tamiya masking tape and we want to sort of mask it down to sort of keep it in place, right? So I'm going to butt it up say about there and that would probably be about nice then i'm going to get my masking tape and then i'm just going to fold that over there like so and that should keep it nicely in place just remember this bit of masking tape here you don't want it going over say the little tips here now there is just on the outer edge of our template here there is like a just a blank bit right and that is going over where we want it to be but that is underneath the seat area and there is another stage to this wood effect which doesn't make that an issue at all so don't worry about that but what we plain and simply do it's so so easy right we're just gonna get some thinners we're gonna get our um what is it we're gonna be using medium brown here which is by vallejo model a which is 038 but we're gonna thin it down right we want to have control over this right if we come in first coat and do you know a really nice good coverage right what's going to potentially happen is we could end up having a very sharp edge to this template and we're going to see it being too sharp it's not going to look quite right it needs to be a little bit transparent so as it's it's just not too much in your face it kind of just kind of blends in sort of nicely and gives you a nice pattern so with that mixed up about 78 percent finished to paint we can now just simply spray on this now you this one they do bend over time there is a little bit of something um i do believe it's somewhere where the joystick is you know it is kind of sort of pushing out a bit and you do want it flat to a degree so um you know just be careful with that All right so now what we're going to do is we're just going to start to just lightly spray this on All right we don't want to get too much coverage as i say we just want to begin to start a bit of a pattern now you might want to as you sort of go along lift this up i mean the masking tape is going to hold it in place but if we can just sort of do a bit of a first coat and we just sort of lightly lift it up and you can sort of start to see this pattern emerging there which looks rather rather cool but you are going to have to just keep folding that back and you just build up and build up the layers, have that control. This is why we've thinned it down. We can keep adding a coat after a coat until we get that pattern just at the right transparency where it looks good. Now here is a cool product. This is Heavy Chipping Effects. This is 2011 and it is by Mir Jimenez. Um, this is kind of like the basic sort of air, um, air spray technique but it's a product that you can buy and it's a bit more stable um, what we simply do with this is we're going to pour this into here right and we're just going to spray on standard you know two to three coats as you would do sort of like a normal bit of spraying right real sort of nice and easy spray this on now the whole reason why we're doing this right is um, the floors on p51d mustangs were wood and they would put like um, some sort of a rubber coating on top, sort of like an anti-slip thing or something, but that would get worn away over time. So we're gonna be showing the rubber on top and we're gonna be showing um, that rubber being worn away and showing off 
all this sort of woodwork. So I'll just get two coats on this. And then what you want to do as soon as it's dry, um, you sort of want to put on the next coat, which will be this one here, which will be the X. F85, which is a nice rubber black color. So two coats, soon as it's dry, whack on the XF85, um, and then I'll show you the next bit. So there's our XF85, nice and down, nice rubber sort of black color. Uh, now remember, this is all about sort of letting it dry, touch dry, and not letting it cure, or it doesn't really work as well as this XF85. I've just sprayed this on, and this is now also touch dry, but it hasn't cured. It's what makes it work. Now, what we want to do now is we sort of take the area and we sort of dampen it. So I'm just getting an old brush, right? And I'm just now going to dampen the area. Just keep in mind though, that this is our seat, right? The seat goes just here. Yeah, so um, we don't need to sort of, we need to sort of target the, the, the chipping effect, where the feet are going to be, wearing away the rubber. So it's really this part, we don't really have to touch, that's under the seat. It's more just sort of like up here, right? We just want to sort of rub this away. So I'll just dampen it with some water. And then you want to sort of not jump straight in there with say something hard and really start scratching at it. I mean, first off, kind of just try out the light brush that we've got here. And as you can see already, right, we're starting to break through this paint quite easily because of our chipping effect that we've put down. All right, and we can just brush away at that like so and we could literally almost just leave it at that it's just nicely sort of brushed away that rubber black it's starting to show through our wood effect maybe just a little bit more right and there we go you know it gives us a nice effect not only that it gives us a bit of sort of texture as well because you know we're going to see a bit of a step in the rubber black um, and that just gives us a bit more of a better look. Now, what you want to do now is sort of let that dry. You might have little bits of flaky sort of rubber black now sort of lying around on the surface a bit. Just let that dry a bit and then sort of brush it away with say like a brush or a cotton wool bud once it's nicely dry. But that is just the effect we're after. Um, you could come along if it's a little bit stubborn and it didn't brush away as easy as that. It should do because we've got a proper um, chipping effects going on here. But if it didn't, you can go off and maybe use a sort of much more stronger bristled brush, like hog hairs, that kind of stuff, or even come along with a toothbrush to scratch some areas away. But just for what we want there, that is just, just right. So that's a nice effect. We're now gonna go off and do some Xenophel. We're gonna do this with the cop area and this is where we're going to sort of create shadows and highlights and stuff using the technique called Xenophel. Now we're going to be using the uh, 71095 which is Vallejo model out is their pale green. This is a nice interior color for pretty much any World War II fighter. Um, what we're going to do is we've thinned it down about 40% thinners to paint and then I've gone off and I've taken our uh, 057 model Vallejo air which is black and what I'm doing is I am adding uh, one third black to two, uh, sorry, one part black to two parts our pale green here, right? So I'll just add that. I'm using drops to kind of do it, all right? And then we're gonna mix it all nicely together. Now this is gonna be our sort of our base color, our shadow color. Right, so we're getting a bit of a darker version of our pale green, and we're putting this down first because this is the way Xenophel works. Just spray a little bit into a tissue just to make sure it's all nicely coming out, nice and mixed, nice and easy here. We're now just going to spray our cockpit area of this color all over, all around, as you'd normally do. Nice couple of coats, good coverage, um, and that's the first stage. So with our base color now down, what we want to do is just mix up a normal mixture of our 
pale green just here now with this one this is like our what is our color supposed to be but what we're going to do is we're going to spray it in a way in a xenophil way whereby uh, we, we basically kind of just highlight this and leave shadows behind so the way to do it it is quite simple really is you basically you come in where the sunlight's coming this is the top of the canopy the sunlight's going to be coming in this way so this is the way we want to point but we want to point it at about a 40 degree angle 45 40 degree angle ish right and we never want the airbrush to go over any more than that we go over more than that we're going to spoil the cell at xenophil always keep this now at about 40 to 45 degrees so when we're spraying this we'll just spray this now down as long as we hold that angle and that angle only well i mean you can come like you know 10 15 45 45 degrees just don't go over 45 right oops might have done a little bit there by accident but you know we keep doing that and as we build it up what you'll slowly see um hopefully as you can see there is how the top parts are getting a nice sort of light color and underneath is getting darker and we just keep that until we've got a reasonable amount of coverage for this color All right which shouldn't really take long because you do want to keep that nice bit of a shadow there i'll just do this bit over this side as well just get that sprayed in but as we build up the coach you can really sort to sort of start to see that xenophil come into play as you can see lighter at the top and it just leaves these nice sort of shadows so i'm going to keep doing that until i've got good coverage there will probably be one more coat on that and that should be good so that's all nicely done now and as you can see it does just give us that nice bit of extra interest as well the, the, the same thing works for our seats here and again it just gives us a bit more of a different sort of interest as we would normally do now there is another stage to it we're now gonna we've put like our shadow base down then we put our standard color down and created some highlights we're going to really sort of make some highlights now by basically going off and mixing these two colors together we've got our pale green 90 and our 002 medium yellow all um, mod layer by Vallejo mix them 50 50 and then do your normal sort of mixing as you would in a color cup and you end up with something quite sort of bright now with this stage it's basically the same all we got to do now is just change the angle so whereas we was at about 40 45 degrees with our pale green what we're going to now do is come to maybe about five degrees 10 maximum so we're really sort of kind of just going to hopefully just hit the tips of all the raised areas all right so if we just do this now we're just going to start off with our first coat and hopefully you can already see that's made a bit of a nice sort of difference um depending on how far you want to go with this you could make it sort of really sort of in your face but um kind of keep this one sort of as light as you can right, i'm just going to give that a little bit more i feel like it could just do with a bit All right and there we go that kind of just gives it that little bit more interest now with this one as well you could if you wish you could go that little bit further so we could go off and get these two colors again we'll just do like about a 50 50 mix and we'll mix them together and we can actually start getting out a paintbrush all right so if we get these nicely mixed together we should have around about the same color but what we can do is we sort of use the edge of the paintbrush all right if we bring you right in on this we can use the edge of the paintbrush and basically we could sort of just start to touch these edges and we could sort of if we so wished really sort of give a nice edge to bits All right it is kind of cool when maybe you come to bits of detail maybe we could just give that a nice bit of a, a touch just to give that a bit more of a highlight just like so and we can literally sort of just go around maybe we would give a side highlight a little bit here right even sort, sort of like dials and stuff we can give them 
little bit of highlights and this is just really sort of focusing in and just giving that nice little bit of a touch of detail really kind of giving those highlights a really good go this is like a technique like where you know sort of like miniature painting and stuff but why not i mean this is just another way of showing you how to go about getting your cockpits done in different ways but that's xenophile technique it is pretty easy and you get quite an effective look to it so uh, it's it's another way of going about things another way of trying things um, i'm now going to go off and sort of finish this cockpit sort of weather it up and i'll let you know what colors and what weathering products are used um, and we'll move along with the build so the cockpit's all been done now, and I thought I'd just let you know what colours I've used before we end this particular episode. Uh, first off, you know, we've used our interior green 095 pretty much throughout. Um, a few little other colours I've used, I mean, we've got the back of the headrest just here, uh, that was XF90. We've got a couple of olive drab areas as well, uh, which is 043 Model Air by Vallejo. I did also kind of use this as a wash for that, the... Um, well, some flesh tone shade by Citadel. Um, really good for kind of, you know, sort of putting shades on things like brown and stuff. Um, we did a little bit of chipping with Lead Belcher just here by Citadel. Just a little bit here and there, nothing sort of major. Um, our air intake just at the bottom here. I did come in with AK's Extreme Metal, which is their AK488, um, a nice aluminium color, a nice matte aluminium. Um, we're not going to really see inside there much, so it's not majorly a big deal, but you know, quick spray of that color in there, um, no big deal at all. And that was pretty much it um, for all our colors. When it came to weathering, that was pretty nice and simple. As I say, I did a little bit of chipping with the, the um, lead belcher there. But mainly it was coming along any sort of black parts. I came in with a nice filter. I know it's a filter, but we can use it as a, a wash, like a weathering wash. And that was the dark gray for white, which was 1502 by ammo. And then for all our sort of interior green color um, areas, I did the brown for dark green, which was 1506. Again, a filter by ammo ammo um, and that gets us up to this stage now i have sort of test fitted this uh, the, um, it is there is a little bit i will admit a bit of sort of something going on something a little bit too fat in there as you can see we've got a bit of a gap there we need to sort of squash it down and it does lock down so not a big deal but i have been doing a little bit of shaving at the contact points where, where it will glue into the opposite side of the fuselage. So uh, I've just been sanding them a little bit here and there and then sort of test fitting and keep doing that. Shouldn't have a problem, but it all looks like it's going to go together rather nice. And as you can see, you know, looking pretty sort of cool and looking very nicely weathered and everything there. We do have our instrument display panels. Again, you know, really fantastic looking photo etch by um, Eddard, as always. And that will just slot in there, which you can do later on at the end. All right, and there is basically our cockpit. So I'm going to carry on with this unless I get a fit issue, and I'll show you that. But probably the next step is probably going to be tackling some nice natural metal finish, which will be in episode two. Um, just a quick one as well. I did use good old Matt UV varnish to seal this all in. But as always, until next time, my name is Bob Waldron. This is Genesis Models, and I'll see you in the next episode.